I have a hard message this morning because I know that I will be preaching against trend and I will be preaching against the status quo and the progressive Christianity and the progressive politics of not only America but the world. And so I'm prepared today to lay it all out and leave nothing to guessing because what the Lord has to say today is very strong and this message I believe is directed more so towards the church and towards the leadership. Everything, whether it is in a business, a nation, or in a church, or even the house, rises and falls upon leadership. The responsibility goes to the head. The responsibility goes to the delegated authority. If you live by yourself, you are the head underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ. And so the decisions you make affect your life. And it is in a greater responsibility when those who have people underneath them do not properly place their direction under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, then they don't operate in proper authority. They operate in rebellion and witchcraft, witchcraft and rebellion mixed together is a very dangerous, dangerous concoction because rebellion is witchcraft. It's as the sin thereof. And here's what the Lord said to me. He said, woe to those who call good evil and evil good who pollute the minds of the innocent, who fornicate with demons and lie with seducing spirits. Your doctrines of devils is being spewed across this nation. It is being written in the minds of my people, yet I find very few standing against this flood with truth. My church is drowning in deception. She refuses my help. She rejects my pleas to come out of Babylon. Judgment is the only course to bring her to reality. Wake up, shepherds. Wake up, sheep. Can you not hear the trembling sounds of judgment? Can you not see the writing on the wall? Your time is short. Your options are few. Comply with the agenda of the fallen one and die. Or refuse to fall for his deception and live. Choose this day. Father, hide me now behind the shadow of the cross of the Lord Jesus, that no man would see me, for my life is default. Let them see the Lord Jesus, and always remember the name that is above every name. Again, I thank you for being here today. I thank you for those that are watching, those that are listening on radio and different internet platforms. We're ever so grateful for what the Lord is doing. And none of it is for self and self gain or promotion because again, all that we do is default. Let me try that again. All that we do is default. You will not carry one thread of your clothing with you to heaven. Not one silver coin or gold nugget, or diamond on your finger. Someone else will take it, hawk it. Come on, church. And do something else with it while you are either in heaven or in hell. So life is but a vapor, and we don't have the luxury of time in this hour to play 
church. I don't believe we should ever have been playing church, but it seems as though the generations prior to us have been very serious about the hour they're living in, and now when it's time to be the most serious, we're the most laziest, and we have lost focus of why we're here today. And we have lost a passion for the Bible and the truth thereof and the pursuit of a king. And therefore, the earth has run wild and the agenda of the fallen one seems to be on the front page every day of every newspaper. It's the headlines every evening when you go home. You hear more and more of the agenda of the Antichrist and of the beast system than you do of the gospel. And there's a reason for that. It's been written, but it's also because of the failure of the leadership of the body of Christ. It is the failure of the house of God. Because even though everything rises and falls on leadership, and I am very strong on leaders I also blame the folks who let leaders get away with stuff. Murder and adultery and fornication and homosexuality and lesbianism and any type of ill of society and sin in general. We, we've allowed them to get away with these things because nobody wanted to call sin, sin. And therefore, like the pet serpent, whom was innocent at birth, come on somebody, but after time grew and ended up killing the owner because the owner did not realize the venom that was inside of that snake. That's what sin has done to us. And so I gave you the word that the Lord spoke to my heart and the message that he gave me is called the Church of Sodom. The church of Sodom. And I said, okay. And I straightened myself out in my chair behind my desk. And I knew this was going to be a powerful word from the Holy One. And I knew that there would be resistance to this today. And it will reverberate throughout the week, I'm sure. But nonetheless, it is my assignment. I will say, as I've always said, that I love everybody. Uh, Try that one more time. I love everybody, and I believe that every person has a right to the cross, that every person has the God-given grace to confess with their tongues that Jesus Christ is Lord and that no part of society is damned by birth or by association. It is from the original sin of Adam and Eve that all men and women are born into sin, the sin nature. There must be a conversion of the heart through the confession of the tongue by the mouth to be born again. And only that piercing revelation can be known by an all-seeing God. And I will know and you will know by the fruit in which they live, which is the external evidence of an internal conversion. It's called the circumcision of the heart. And that is the simplest form of being born again that I know of. And man has that opportunity. He was granted equal access to God through the cross by Jesus Christ and his blood. But not everybody that is born on the earth will go to heaven. At least you won't go there and stay. Let me try that again. Everybody will stand before the great white throne judgment of God, but not everybody gets to stay. And what a terrible day that will be to be judged by an almighty God and then to be banished forever into hell, especially if you've already been in hell and you get a moment of reprieve only to be 
sent back. I've just preached Bible to you. In fact, I've preached doctrine just now that 99% of the churches don't talk about anymore because we don't want nobody hitting a panic button and getting all freaked out about a reality that everybody listening to me right now, including me, will have that experience of eternity. And so God has given man that right. But he's also given him a very powerful will inside of him that can say, God, I don't want this life of righteousness. I reject the cross. I reject holiness. And I reject your word. In fact, the closest sovereignty to the will of God is the will of man. Let me try that again. The closest to the sovereignty of an almighty God is the will of man. Man can say yes to God and man can say no to God. Man can, can follow the, the edicts, the words, the commandments of the word of God or he can make a word unto himself that satisfies his lifestyle. And the church is the one that's responsible to be the pen of a ready writer, to write upon the tablets of the heart, men and women, the truth of the word of God, and to tell them what life says, what the word says, what the truth says, what the way says, and not to allow trends or some politician or some act or activists tell them what truth is and what life is. But the church has become silent on sin. And because we become silent on sin, the world has roared with what they believe is righteous. And thus, the church of Sodom has been alive and well in America for a while, but it's expanding. And I want to talk to you this morning. Go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah's back a little early from winter break. But welcome back, Prophet Jeremiah. Can anybody say amen? Thank God for prophets today who speak the word of the Lord. I don't know of many prophets. Let me try that again. There's not many prophets in the land today, true prophets. I'm not talking Brother Yeye and Sister Nene. I'm talking about true Holy Ghost men and women of God there are very few today, got a lot of wannabes. Are you there in Jeremiah? I know it's been a while. I don't want you to cut your finger on the pages looking, but I will begin in verse 1, the church of Sodom. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Woe. Whoa. It's not an easy message to begin from Jeremiah, but the Lord said, Woe unto those leaders, unto those pastors who destroy. It means to cause them to wander. Jeremiah, I got a problem in the camp. I got a problem in the church of Sodom. I got a problem in these United States of America and the UK and the world. I've got a problem with my body, Jeremiah. We have leaders that want to lead my people astray. Astray from what, pastor? Lead them astray and make them wander from the truth. To make them wander away from the old-fashioned, if you will, gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, the trend in the American churches today is to do just that, be trendy. 
make everything fashionable, make everything attractive, make sure everybody's comfortable, make sure you got your pillow in flight. And we have in-flight entertainment and all the entrapments that keep you snoozing as we slide down further into the abyss. So woe unto the pastors who destroy and they scatter. It means to dash them into pieces. How do shepherds destroy and cause people to wander and dash them into pieces with such strong words of the Hebrew because they don't give them the rock solid truth of the word of God. They break them apart. Their lives break apart. When you mix anything with Christianity that is not of God, it is fragile at best. When you mix philosophy and politics with Christianity, it's fragile. When you mix the pursuit of the love of money and fame and all the other entrapments with Christianity, it becomes fragile. And that is why Christians break when every wind of doctrine comes and every wave of crisis comes and every adversity comes and adversary comes. They break because they're not on the rock of ages, on that solid rock of the Gibraltar of faith. Why? Because we don't teach people how to be solid anymore in Christianity. We teach them how to cruise and how to look through the menu and find out what fits you in your spiritual diet. With a look of some folks, we need to do some more dieting. Is anybody here today, including your pastor, but I'm not speaking of the waistline. I'm speaking of the internal man because now we have so many channels to choose from and so many voices and so many so-called pastors and prophets and leaders and, and all these people, these charlatans to choose from. People sometimes wonder, what is my digestion? What is my diet of preaching and these different things? And I have to tell folks, it ain't much. Not, not of today's folks. See, I love listening to a great preacher called Jeremiah and Isaiah and Micah. Come on, somebody. And Jesus, the prince of all preachers, the prophet of all prophets. I said, I like to listen to truth. And we need that today. I would rather you listen to the Bible and the word of God than me up here preaching to you, to be honest with you. So you scattered them. You have broke them into pieces Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and you have driven them away and have not visited them. Watch this. The word visit there means to take care of them, to watch over them. The proof of my care for you is to bring discipleship and discipline to your life. That's the proof that I care. To beat off the wolves and to pour in the oil and the wine and to help you with your cuts and bruises of life and to help you mature and become who you're supposed to be in God and to strengthen your spiritual muscles to carry your cross and to endure to the end is the greatest sign of my care for you. But today's society and the modern church today, when they have this feelings on the ends of their sleeves and they want everybody to please them and don't say nothing hard to me and don't push me preacher and don't speak too loud, by the way, because I might get emotional. 
We have done nothing but made them the children of hell to the point that they resist change and resist discipleship and resist discipline, which in fact causes them to resist truth. And because the pastor does not want to resist and does not want to fight the good fight of faith, and he's tired of people walking out on him. He's tired of all of the argumentation in the house. He's tired of all the adversary. He's tired of all the stares and the looks and the groans and the moans. He gives up. And he says, I would rather conform to them than to fight them. By the way, my peace is paramount. No, my peace is not paramount. My job is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to raise up a group of people who are disciplined followers of Jesus Christ who make it to heaven and stay. That's my job. I don't, my peace comes when I'm walking with the Prince of Peace. My peace comes when I pray in the Holy Ghost. My peace comes when I deliver the message. My peace when I step out of the pulpit. My peace is found in God. But here these shepherds who supposedly feed the people have scattered it and driven them being have not visited them. Didn't take care of them. Didn't love on them. I've taught this congregation that the shepherd and his staff has two ends on it. The modern church will teach you that it's just got one little hook. Give me a little lamb. Come on now. But the reality is that staff had another end of it, and that was to beat off the wolves. That was to fight. One side is to lead and to guide and to bring into correction. The other side was to beat the enemy out of the sheepfold. We've lost that part of leadership in the body of Christ. The church of Sodom no longer does that and we accept anything into our house as long as the coffers get filled up, as long as the likes on YouTube go up, as long as the membership expands, as long as we can build new buildings, as long as the preacher can get a bigger salary, as long as he can get bigger contracts on media platforms, as long as his popularity continues to grow, it doesn't matter. Anything goes in the church of Sodom. Oh, I'm not like this morning, but that's all right. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Said you didn't want to visit. You didn't want to care for them. You didn't want to spend time with them. And let me tell you something. It's not just preaching that is showing forth the care, but it's what you preach. Listen to me, it's what you preach. Anybody can preach trend. Anybody can preach a TikTok sermon or an Instagram sermon or some type of media sermon. But not many can preach the heart of God. Not many can preach what thus saith the Lord is right now. What is God saying to a perverse, crooked, wicked, terminal generation? What is he saying? And he said, because you don't care for them, I will visit you. And that's what's happening in our churches today. That's why our mega pastors are falling. Listen to me. I want you to think about this for a second. You're just watching the brightest stars fall. How many other stars are following, falling that you can't see? How many storefront pastors? How many little churches on the corner, pastors and leaders and evangelists and songwriters are falling? You see, the proof is found in the atmosphere of our nation. The truth is found in our community. You want to know if your community is living in righteousness, then there will be revival in the house of God. 
I didn't say lights and cameras and action and smoke and all these different entrapments of entertainment, but there'll be true Holy Ghost change and true Holy Ghost revival in the heart and the minds of the people. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, says the Lord. There's more coming. You're going to see more exposure in the house of God. I'm warning the church today, it's coming. Be careful how high you put somebody on a pedestal in ministry. Be careful. You need to honor. You need to love. You need to support. You need to be loyal, but you need to know who labors among you. Because I'm telling you, there's some names that are going to come under the slot of failure. And folks are going to lose their salvation over it. They already have. They're dismayed by the church. Well, here's your problem. You should never have joined up with the church of Sodom anyways. You should have been with the true church. You say, how do I find the true church? It's in the Bible. If they're not living and preaching and singing and loving the true word of God, then they're not the true church. Come on now. And I'm not talking about no denomination. And I will gather the rem remnant of my flock. I just want to put this in here real quick. I love how Jeremiah always puts in hope. See, people make fun of prophets and they say they're doom and gloom. But listen to this hope for just a moment. I won't read it all. But he says, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them. Listen to me. There's a double understanding of this prophecy. Yes, it deals with Israel and future events and of current days and what the Lord has did for them as a nation, but it also is talking about what's happening now. The church of Jesus Christ is alive and well. There is no doubt about it. The called out ones, the ones that love God, the firebrands, the remnant, they are alive and well today. And God is moving through his church all across the earth. You better believe that. And so there's a great promise of God bringing forth shepherds. And you can read it all the way down to verse 9. The king is definitely coming. Talking about the promises of our king, he is coming. Isn't that good news today? He's not going to leave us here stranded and abandoned. Verse number nine. Are you all okay with this? You're not nervous, are you? Are you mad? Just give me a few more minutes. Because madness makes you change, don't it? When you get a little angry and grumpy, watch this. My heart, verse nine. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. The King James does not do a good translation on the word broken. It means to burst open. My heart is bursting wide open because of the prophets. I'm looking across America today and it's hard for me to find those that are bursting open with tears and mourning for our churches and for the fallen leaders and for the indictment of getting away from the truth. I'm looking to see if anybody is bursting forward with weeping and crying. Though I know they're in the shadows and I believe that they are there because God always has that remnant. But the reality is we do not see it in our churches. We don't hear it in our preacher's voices. We don't hear passion anymore. We don't hear it in morning prayers. We don't hear it by the church crying out to a living God and saying, God, the prophets, the prophets, the prophets have turned their back on you. The reason we are in the condition we are in is because we don't have prophets. 
and pastors who hear from God. They hear from marketing managers and advertisement folk. They hear from board members and people with money and political organizations. They don't hear from God. He said, my heart is broken within me because of the prophets and all my bones shake. I'm like a drunken man. I'm like a man who his wine has overcome. In other words, he's so out of joint and so out of shape and so out of function because of what? Because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness Jeremiah, look at this with me. Jeremiah, use your imagination. He's a prophet of God. He has a job. He has a ministry. He has an assignment. And that is to go to the leadership, both political and religious, and tell them that you are false and to tell them that you are wrong. And he looks across the landscape and his heart begins to burst with sorrow because he sees the unrighteousness. He sees the adultery. He sees He sees the homosexuality. He sees the fornication. He sees the gambling. He sees the theft. He sees the divorce. He sees the breaking of homes. He sees the splitting of churches. He sees all of the corruption, the conspiracy that takes place in his nation. And he weeps and he's like a drunken man because folks have lost the fear of the Lord. They lost the fear of the Lord. He said, because of the words of thy holiness, the holiness of the word of God, men don't fear God anymore. Men can do what they want to do on Saturday night and stand up on Sunday morning and preach like a man from another world and nobody knows the difference that they've been living in sin. Nobody knows the difference that they're dirty inside and they're dirty on the outside and they accept it because the show seems to go on. And there's no fear. And even when they do hear that the pastor has sinned, oh, they may say he had a little trouble with his flesh. Oh, they may say it was the wife's fault. Oh, they may say it was COVID. Oh, they may say it was just pressure. Oh, they may say it's because he was just too high. He'll be okay. Just give him a little time away. And you know that's the truth. And they barely discipline the person and put them back into the pulpit and you've made them twofold more the child of hell when you've done that. And now they get emboldened to do things even further and to go further into sin and go further into debt. And the church does nothing about it. The church of Sodom does nothing about the sin. But Jeremiah said, I'm, I'm broken. I'm broken because I look and I see that nobody fears the words of God's holiness no more. And as a pastor, I know it and I see it in people been doing this for over 25 plus years and I've watched how people enter into the house of God. I watch how they serve and volunteer. I watch their life and their life dictates how they believe this word and how they feel about this word because I ask you this one thing. If you really feel the fear of the Lord, would you act like you do like you do right now? Somebody help me in this Presbyterian seminary. Is anybody here today? Would you act the way that you do? Would you sing the way that you sing if Jesus was standing right here right now? Oh, no, pastor. I would, holy, holy, holy. I'd fall on the ground. I'd be weeping. I'd be at his feet. You don't do it now. I told you it's going to be rough today. You get mad, it may be your last service. I don't know, it may be the last time they click on the watch and listen, but I'm just telling you the truth. Because we fake it in the church of Sodom. 
We fake our Christianity. We act like we love God. Well, I don't know. The music just wasn't right. It just, how do you know the music going to be right in heaven for you, sweetie pie? What if God decides to go acapoco? Acapello, by the way, for you who don't know where acapoco is and what it is. Huh? What if he just tells those angels, be quiet for a second, get off of that instrument, and let's hear these folk? I hope you don't ask this church to clap. Because this church can't clap. Flows like, she's shaking. We try to get you all some clapping songs, it don't work. Anybody here today? Whoa! What would you be like? Because if you would act any different than you're hypocritical, I'm hypocritical. If I would act any different, now I understand there's atmosphere and there's hunger and there's emotions and a lot of things against you in your flesh. But my point is this, if we really love God, then we'll pursue him. If the church of Sodom really loved God, then they would produce holiness and they would pursue holiness. He said, I, I, I weep because I don't see it. I burst in my heart because I don't see it. I don't see the passion for God. Now, I'm not talking about making a fool out of yourself so everybody can see how spiritual you are and put a check by your name and say, ooh, that was good, good move. This ain't no, you know, Christian Olympics. But I'm talking about passion. The heart. Getting around people who talk trash and talk things against the word and talk things against holiness and talk things against righteousness. Do you weep within your heart and do you put your hand out and say, stop? I want to speak to you about his holiness. I want to speak to you about his righteousness. Verse 10. For the land is full of adulteries. What's the connection? Because you don't fear the Lord, America, the land is full of adulteries. Because, church of Sodom, you do not fear God, your pastor is full of adulteries. Your congregation is full of adulteries. Don't like that, do you? Because of what you reject in God, you accept in the devil. What you reject in goodness and righteousness, you reap in unrighteousness. That's why murders are off the chart. That's why craziness is off the chart. That's why politicians and preachers are being exposed. For the land is full. Everybody say full. That's a lot. Full of adulteries. For because of the swearing, the land mourneth. See, this is what you get. The word adulteries there is very interesting because it's not just fornication of the flesh, but it also means apostasy. I remember somewhere in the Bible, in the New Testament, I believe a gentleman by the name of the Apostle Paul said that there would be a great falling away first. There would be a great falling away and in other places of Scripture we'd find that the church would become lukewarm. And because there's no pursuit of holiness, that apostasy begins to take place. And like a wildfire, it fills the fire. And it fills up the entire nation and the land thereof. And that's what he said. This is what we're seeing. And this is what we're experiencing. And this is what we're going through. Because there's no fear of the Lord. The adulteries. And the swearing, the swearing basically means this, of making oaths and promises. 
Do you recognize and realize that in the fake false church of America, the church of Sodom, when people get up and they sing what they sing and the words that they pronounce and the confessions and everything of the whole circus of a church service, do you realize they are making a false oath to God and they are swearing They are saying they're in covenant, but they are not. And that, sir, and that ma'am is dangerous and will damn you. Because you are evoking the name of God, but you're provoking him to anger because with your mouth you please, but in your heart you despise. It's dangerous. Dangerous, church of Sodom. That's why we're shaken right now. That's why leaders are being exposed. Watch this. Swearing the land, it mourneth, and the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. What does that mean, the force is not right? Watch this. The translation of that out of the Hebrew into the English means this. Their force is not right means that the strength that they have been given is not being used for righteous sake. Church of Sodom, listen to me here in America. You're taking the multiplied millions of dollars that folks have given to you that God has allowed to be transferred into your account and you're not using that strength strength for holiness. You're not using that strength for righteousness. You're not using that multi-million dollar complex for the kingdom of God or that airplane, sir, that you're flying in with your prostitute. I mean, your secretary. I mean, whoever that is. And all the other things that go on behind the closed doors that nobody knows of. And God says, I'm going to expose those things because you've been lying. And those pleasant places will no longer be pleasant. I gave you time to repent. I gave you space to get right. But that force is not for right. Let me tell you something, congregation, and those that are part of this ministry, I fear God. I fear him. Not in the sense that I'm afraid he will destroy me. I reverence my father and I recognize and I realize that one day my whole life will be on a screen before him. I realize that one day that all my works and all of your works will go into the fire at the bema seat of Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. And one day all that I did in my flesh and was not of God, it was for man pleasing, will be burned up into Nothing but ashes. But that which was pure, that which was holy, that which was right will be gold. I'm going for the gold, y'all. I said, I'm going for the gold. I'm asking God to burn the chaff now. Burn it up now. Get the stubble out now. Get the chaff out now, God. Get those impurities out of me now, God. You see, that is a life that is after holiness. That is the truth of what holiness is. That is the truth of what discipleship is. God, deal with me now so that I may look like you, Jesus. I may live like you. I may walk and talk like you and smell like the rose of Sharon and have the presence and the essence of a holy God. That's what the anointing does. The anointing is not just to work and to get up here and do things. You're anointed to live as well as anointed to die. Wish I had some help here this morning. Your force is not right. Church of Sodom, your force is not right. The media platforms that we have been given are not for us to promote ourselves and our personalities of ministry. Use what God has given you absolutely. That's why we're expanding and we're trying to do all that we possibly can. But the core of our pursuit is the holiness of God, the presence of God, and the souls of men. Everything else doesn't matter. 
I'm not going to stand before God and neither will you and see how many subscribers you had and likes that you had and all of these things. No, it'll be about the heart. Verse 11, for both prophet and priest are profane. Do you hear what he said? The word profane means polluted. Since I like things simple, I'm not so educated as some of y'all are. It means dirty. I like dirty better, don't you? Polluted. No, it's dirty. Do you have any unclean laundry? No, I got some dirty, rotten laundry, honey. Dirty. He said, the prophets and the priests in the church of Sodom, you're dirty. You're dirty. You're unclean. You're polluted. Your prophecies are polluted. They're profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Where did he find it? In his house. He found the wickedness. He found the dirtiness. Watch this. Verse 12. Wherefore their way shall be slippery. Their way shall be slippery. The way there means journey. Their journey shall be slippery. That's why they slip it and slide it. My wife and I have been involved in some large ministries over the years. And we've seen a few things or two. And I remember one time sitting in a mega church, music was thumping where you couldn't even feel the pulse in your own body. You ever been in one of them services? So loud. Everybody was doing their thing. Preacher was high powered, popular. But I knew some things that were going on. And my wife was aware of some things that were going on with the administration, staff, leaders. And we looked at each other as we made our exit out of that place. And we said, if we have to sell ourselves to get this, you can have it. Come on, somebody. If we got to sell ourselves out, if we got to buy into the world and the church trendy stuff and to rub other people's backs and all the things that goes on behind closed doors, you can have it. Ignited church was birthed out of purity and the pursuit of God and the pursuit of his glory. And we will see his glory in a greater tangible way than you could ever imagine. It's coming. It's coming. And unto them, it's slippery. It's a slippery way. Slippery also means here of fine promises. In other words, they use flatteries. And because of flatteries, their way became darkened. Come on, I know what I'm talking about. What's happening in the church of Sodom? We've made deals with politicians. We've compromised and used flattering, flattery words and we've used fine promises. And we just said, well, we'll give in a little bit because we want to be politically correct. We'll give in a little bit because we need a little bit of leverage. We'll give in a little bit because we could sure use the popularity and the prosperity. And by the way, it's all for souls. And the church of Sodom has sold out and we are in deep, deep trouble. Watch this. And they shall be driven on and fall there. And who's going to drive them to the abyss? God will. How? Through judgment. He didn't put the sin on them. They put the sin on themselves. They pursued the sin. But God says, you want to ride sin? Let me show you how to get to the end of it. Is that what you want to do? Is that what you want to do? If you want to reject God, God allows you to reject him. That's the power of the will of man. You can say yes to God and you can say no to God. The choice is up to you. For I'll bring upon them evil, upon them even the year of their visitation, says the Lord. I don't have time to talk about that, but I want you to go when you have an opportunity as your homework, go through the whole chapter of Jeremiah 23 and find out how many times God says, I will. 
you'll be amazed. I have, I will. You see, when it's all said and done, it isn't about me. When it's all said and done, it's not even about the prophets who are out there, the true prophets. It's about God. He will have the final word. We'll stand back in the shadow of the cross and say, see, he told you, didn't he? He warned you, didn't he? Not I, but he did. And I have seen the folly of the prophets of Samaria, and they prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. You false prophets are making God's people err compromising and having trends and being politically correct, you're causing people to err. Stay in this narrow way, the straight gate. Stay in truth. Stay in the word of God. Paul said all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. There's some things I can get away with, but there's other things you can't get away with. And that grace is dependent on how that the word is declared unto you and how your conscience receives it. But I would rather err on the side of conscience, being cautious than in my conscience than to go wild and say, oh, grace has covered me. Come on now. In other words, I'm not playing Russian roulette with God. I've had pastors tell me, well, you know, you can do this and get away with it. Uh Uh-uh. First of all, I know me. I wasn't always an angel. I just blew Flo away. She, She just thought, oh, no. My wings, well, I didn't have wings. Come on, somebody. I know me. There are things I don't need to do. There are things I don't need to see. There are folks I don't need to be around. Oh, you're just not mature. I'm alive. And then maybe I need to grow up in that area, but there's a certain things I don't do and put myself in that position to show I'm strong. It's stronger not to get involved in it, Jack. Then to try to wallow in it and say, oh, yeah, you know. Is anybody still here today got a brain? And people, they, they do it all the time. They, well, I'll just, I'll just go, I'm going to step out. I'll tell you what, you come to church with me and I'll go to strip club with you. That's a true statement. That happened recently. Some big shot Christian dude. No, you come to church with me. I ain't going nowhere with you. You crazy fool. Only strip club is going to be is in my bathroom with the door shut and the window closed. Y'all ain't helping me. Y'all ain't helping me now. It's the truth. But we've gotten so, we've gotten, uh, so bold, if you will. And, and Christianity, uh, the, the word has not been preached. And, and we've, we've gotten to the place where we just try things out. And, oh, God understands. No, you better know yourself. You better know your limits. And you better know what things you can and cannot do. And if it bothers your conscience to you, it is sin. And how do you know if it's sin? Read the Bible. Because God will write upon your tablet of your heart and the conscience of your mind. He'll tell you what's right or wrong by the power of the Holy Ghost. But see, again, the church of Sodom and our false prophets and our false leaders have watered this down to watch this. We don't know the difference between condemnation and conviction. Conviction brings you to repentance. Condemnation makes you feel bad. That's all it does. Just a little moment of feeling bad. You're just trying to condemn me, Panther. No, I'm trying to keep you from going to hell, sugar bug. Yeah, I'm trying to keep you from spending eternity away from God because of your little moment of sin. Hey, sin is fun for a season, but that season does end. And then there's payday, baby. Uh, Let let, let me go on. So I'm not going back to the vomit. I know who I am. If I get put in a situation, I know who I am. I know how to handle myself, believe me. I'm not a prude. I'm, a, I, 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 you know, I'm not some Puritan and, and, and born in the church. 
But I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to put myself in a position to bring myself harm or my family harm to show you how strong I am. Is anybody, can anybody see that today? I, I got to go, you took away my clock, so now I don't know. I'm just going to preach it. Watch this, I got about 17 more pages. You think I'm kidding? And I've seen the folly in the priests of Samaria. Watch this, verse 14. I've also seen in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. God sees it, folks. Pastor, listen to me. God sees you. God sees you, and you're lying. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers. When the pastor stands up and he lies and he tells you you can fornicate or he can tell you you can get away with a little flesh or you can watch a little skin flick or you can do this or live in a, a homosexual lesbian lifestyle or you can smoke a little bit here and do a little bit of recreational drugs here or put a little bit of wiki in your body. That's whiskey if you don't know what wiki is. Come on, somebody. It's five o'clock somewhere, and that whole mentality of working hard and partying down because you earned it, that is in the church. It's in the church. It's a good old boy church. <laughs> he says, I've seen it all. And pastors, when we allow that to be done, we cause adultery and we cause lies to be spread in the house of God. Because God says, no, that's not how you're going to live. That's not how I live. What happened to follow Christ? What happened to have the very image of Jesus anymore? Now we want to model ourselves after Pastor Kardashian or St. Trump or Bishop Biden. Y'all ain't helping me. Pictures of praying. Uh, I, I want to puke, man. I, I do. I, I want to go get me one of those. What, we were talking about the other day after service, Mary was, we were talking about those bags of the airplane. They call them sanitary bags. No, puke. They're a puke bag. Barf bag. You can edit that if you want. You can leave it on. I can care less. It's the truth. Somebody in the talks plain, don't they? Somebody needs to explain it perfectly. Make me want to puke, sit there and be one of the most pro-abortionist abortionist type of administrations and pro-homosexual and all the deviant stuff that's going on and you want to sit there and say that you're praying to my God? You ain't praying to Jehovah, dude. None of y'all been praying to Jehovah. And I, I don't have time to kick open that can and I got to go. But I'm not done. Watch this. And they walk in lies and they strengthen also the hands of the evildoers. Yeah, you helping them. That one doth not return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants of who? Gomorrah. Welcome to the church of Sodom. Notice it. They don't return, they don't come back to holiness, they don't come back to righteousness because you strengthened them. You told them it was okay. Watch. I'm bringing this to a close momentarily. The reason we are at the onslaught of what we're going to face in Christian persecution in America is not because of the heathen. It is not because of the pagans. It is because the church has allowed the sewage and the leaven to come inside to the hearts of the preachers and they don't have backbones anymore to stand up and tell the truth about the word of God in love. We're afraid. We have now become polished CEOs who articulate a philosophy of trend and culture and political correctness rather than Holy Ghost fire and Pentecostal truth of the word of God. And Pentecost is not a denomination. It is a movement of the Spirit of God. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's the fire that shut up inside of you, inside of your bones. You can't help it. And you want to live righteous. You want to pray in righteousness. You want to preach in righteousness. 
and you pursue holiness. As I began my message, I love everybody. There's not a part of culture that I don't love. I wasn't born in a church like some of you all were. I was a sinner. I lived a very bad lifestyle. I've seen just about everything and things I wish I never had seen. But they're a reality of who I am. And so when I preach from that perspective, I preach from the perspective that you can be changed and you don't have to follow the way of the world. I'm talking church folk first. But the church of Sodom has diluted the truth and now the world has gone wild. In my message, I told you fatal decision. The church would go into exile at some point due to our sin, due to the unrighteousness that is going to take place in this nation and around the world. I shared with you a little bit about that as well the other time that we got together as the United Nations is taking names of those that oppose the LGBT barbecue agenda. Now there's a reason why I always say it wrong is because I will not give them credit or honor. They are a militant movement to destroy the innocency of God's creative order and plan and I disrespect them and I will always disrespect them as I would the adulterers of America union. Somebody's going to Google that. If you find it, let me know because I don't know. I just made that up. I'm an equal opportunity offender if you don't know me by now. Or the potheads of America or the mushroom smoking token whatevers. Local number 55. The problem is the church has been quiet. And now the nations are roaring with their agenda. And the church of Sodom has allowed it to take place. Let me give you a few headlines before I leave you today, I hope I have a few minutes left of your time and patience. Cadbury, if you don't know about this or seen the commercial, they now have a same-sex kiss commercial where two men are taking the Cadbury egg and eating it together mouth to mouth. My last Cadbury was eaten a long time ago. You say, why does that matter? It matters because it is causing our generation of young people to be polluted. And very few preachers are preaching about this and have the backbone or tenacity to stand up, even if they don't have a media platform, and at least warn their folks. Say, what can I do about it, pastor? Don't eat another Cadbury. Don't put your money in it protest it, boycott it, whatever you need to do, but it won't be in my house and it certainly won't be in this church. We don't celebrate the day anyhow. The house just passed the Equality Act. If you have been sleeping upside of the post hole or just got back from the moon, the Equality Act has been passed in the house. Now it most must go to the Senate. Will it pass? I don't know if it's this round or next round or next administration or what happens down the road, but it's coming. The Lord said so, and it will be a fatal decision. And the church will go into exile at some point because we'll be persecuted for our beliefs. And there's too much to talk about it, but they're going to try to make the church hire those that live in that lifestyle. And that ain't happening. Is anybody here? And they're going to try to silence the pastors because you're picking on a certain people group who now have civil rights. Listen to me. I said this before, and I'll say it again. Every black person in America ought to rise up and say, hell no, you're not going to hijack the civil rights because of your sexual deviant lifestyle. Well, you ain't going to find many people say that. But I'm telling you the truth. That ain't what the king, Martin Luther King, marched for. No, sir. 
Come on, nobody's helped me. Now nobody wants to be my friend. Everybody's shell-shocked. He just said that. You can't find anybody else. I'm sure they're there, but the people are afraid to tell the truth. Hijacking of civil rights movement and making law for something that should be for a certain people group, not for how you are sexually. That is an agenda from hell. And that's why I got a problem. And that's why God has called me to speak out against sin. Again, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, the, the adulterer, the fornicator, the proper, uh, the, the pornographer, all those folks, I got the same, same message for you. But right now, this is the trending agenda of the fallen one. And it affects my children and your grandchildren and the children to come. I got a problem with that. It's the inheritance of God. What will the church look like in 20 years from now? I'm afraid to wonder. Look who they're trying to put in, 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 in positions in our, in, our, in our country, in the highest offices of the land. Look at some of that. You understand where I'm headed? It's the church of Sodom. The church of Sodom opened the door and let it happen. Pastors and preachers and, and prophecy to be thundering from their pulpits to at least save the conscience of those that are left. I'm not talking to change legislation. Go for it. You want to march up there? Go for it. You want, you want to get elected? Go for it. I'm not talking about that. I'm not into that patriot, patriotic type of church movement, nationalistic tripe. I'm talking about kingdom reality of the end times and trying to save my children and their conscience and the innocency of what's to come. Glad, listen to this, glad, gay, lesbian, I don't even know. They're just glad. The organization that pushes for change and transformation in the arts and politics, they're pushing for 20% by the year 2025, 20% of all main characters and actors on sitcoms to be transvestites, transgender, gay, and lesbian. They had a record year last year of transgender characters. Are you listening to me? And the folks sit at home and they gobble this propaganda up and the spiritual disease goes inside of them. And those who are, watch this now, I'm talking about those that don't go to church, they just live stream everything and watch sitcoms during the week. You put that in your spirit and you spend more time hearing that demonic doctrines of devils so when a preacher like myself stands up and says this you look at it as bigotry and you look at it as trying to be against the status quo and the trend and you don't receive it because you can't receive it to you it is something spiritually discernible you just don't have that man I could do this for another two hours you put this in your spirit you know how many sitcoms I watch none Zero. There ain't nothing funny to me. It isn't funny to me to see somebody in that lifestyle. That's not funny. The cooking channel. What? See, are you here today? I'm not against the lifestyle as a fact of a person. What can I do about that? No different than a pornographer. I can't do, all I can do is preach and love and try to change them. But when you put that agenda and you make it militant, yes, I got a problem. That's what we're supposed to be fighting against. I'll treat you with love. I'll treat everybody fairly. But you, number one, ain't putting your hands on me and you ain't putting your hands on my children and you ain't putting your doctrine. I don't care who you are. If you're a drug addict, man, uh, listen to this. You, how, how much long do I have? I got to know. Somebody tell me, because I'm serious. I could do this for hours. I'm 10 minutes over. I love it. <laughs> YouTube can go on. You'll just have to edit it for, uh, for WLHR. Those on live streaming YouTube, enjoy this bonus round. 
I'm just going to do it. Can I do it? I got to get this out of my system or my wife's going to have a hard day or two. Listen, I'll just keep preaching to her. My children will be like, come on, man. They had a debate during the time of the Equality Act. Some of y'all may know about this already. And during the debate, they had a Republican guy up there who was talking about how that, you know, this would create the right to kill babies and abortions. You know, I find it so funny that all of a sudden we have these righteous conservatives, the ones that support the LGB barbecue, by the way. Then something like this comes up and it's oh, oh, so bad. But he made some good points, and I'm glad about that. We'll give him a star by his name and let God judge him. How's that? But listen to this. He was talking about God and, and, and the gender confusion, and it's a rejection of God's design and those different things. And Congressman Jerry Nadler said this, God's will is no concern <clears throat> for this Congress. His response is God's will is no concern for this Congress. And sir, you're absolutely correct. You could give a rip about God. You could give a rip about what he feels. And you could care less about righteousness and holiness. Who opened that door? The church of Sodom. Is anybody here? Let me give you two more things and I'm going to get out of your way. You look very impatient. Hillsboro. You remember the Hillsboro, the toy people? We all love Hillsboro, used to. Now they've created the modern family of potato heads so kids can have two moms and two dads. Is anybody here today? They dropped the name Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head to now Potato Head so that a child can take 42 different parts of the body and put them together and make two dudes that be daddy or two mamas that be whatever. Is anybody here? So that they can reflect what the modern families are. That's Hillsboro. That's a toy company. And they said, we don't want to have to be the ones. We don't want to be the ones responsible for causing children to decipher between the male and the female. Let them decide. Are you here, folks? Are you here today? Where is the church? I know people are in the backgrounds saying and trying to change things. But the truth of the matter is, the church of Sodom has allowed this to take place. And finally, in my closing, as all this chaos is going on, we so supposedly have our Christian conservatives getting together politically so they can see what they're going to do, that, do in 2024. And while they do that, they wheel in a golden calf of a statue of St. Trump. I know I just made somebody mad. A golden image of St. Trump to start out their time of beating their chest and talking about how righteous they are. We have gone nuts, folks. And by the way, the person who built the statue said it was made in Mexico. So maybe we didn't make them build the wall, but they did build the golden calf. If you're watching me right now and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you're caught up in any of these addictions and lifestyles, it doesn't matter. If you're far away from God, today's the day to make it right. Today's the day to be born again. All you have to do is call upon the name that's above every name. If you're backslidden, let's get it right today with God. If you've been a part of the church of Sodom and you think that some of this is funny and some of this is cute and some of this lifestyle doesn't matter and you're part of the progressive Christianity movement that says that Jesus accepts this and grace covers it all, you're deceived and you need to get right with God today. You can do it. All you have to do is confess with your tongue. Father, bless your people. Thank you for the amazing grace you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I love you. I'll see you all Wednesday.